time exactly 7.30. Letters have been sent to more than 65,000 recently retired doctors and nurses in England, asking them to return to help the NHS before the coronavirus outbreak reaches its peak. Let's talk to the health secretary, Matt Hancock, who joins us now. Today, feeling this is relatively normal. I'm looking forward to doing some things with the children, <clears throat> although I was exhausted yesterday. Um, I did have a feeling of claustrophobia, and that's not from being stuck in the house. That's almost a claustrophobia of the realisation that you can't do things in the same way that you did before. Like res uh, being restricted. Um, it feels like we've been inside and things have been like this forever now. A bit like when you go on holiday and you come, you know, when you've been there a few days, it seems normal. And then you come back and it's not. Um, I've been speaking to some friends and I have so many friends in bad situations with, you know, people losing work and not making money and not entitled to benefits and not entitled to sick pay and... really hard and then there's been lots of things about people panic buying on tv and i was saying to matthew my husband it's it's difficult i can see it from both sides it's bloody awful when there's no food but then it's almost like a waterfall that's being started and um and once it started you can't stop because you see empty shelves so if there's something on the shelves you want to buy it it's kind of self-perpetuating you know, the only way they can stop it really is by real, real rationing. Um, and maybe people buying different things, because I think there are some things on the shelves. I don't know, I haven't been out for a while. But it's kind of like not sticking to what you normally buy and buying something different, because it's all about food. And Matthew said when he went out, there was quite a lot of frozen veg. I don't know if that's still the case or not. I don't know, I haven't been out. But it's kind of like thinking, thinking of different things. Um, but that all comes with education. Um, and I think also it's important to look after your own. In in the respect, I'm not saying just your family. I'm, I'm I'm saying that you know I have got food in my cupboard. I've got lots of tins and things because I always have tins and things, tins of lentils and whatever. Maybe it's about keeping in communication with your friends. And, you know, people around you and keeping an eye on if they're OK and if they're not OK and you have got stuff in your cupboard, giving it to them. You know, if you've got food and somebody else hasn't, then you give them food and you, you know, that's the way it should work now, maybe. Um, and maybe it will, maybe, maybe people are doing that anyway. So, yeah, just another day of sewing, stuff like that. Well, there you go, that's the business to be in, a ventilator maker. And this is why we all need to stay indoors, not just for old, but for these young people with immune conditions and and things that have happened to them that have damaged their bodies. I wish people would listen. I think my rant is going to be, really, stay at home to protect people. Why don't people get it? People are still booking Mother's Day lunches, for Christ's sakes. It's really starting to annoy me. What are you up to? We're doing Later. So I've swapped to ITV this morning just for a change. Um, an interesting item coming up on Lorraine in the minute, which I will just film a clip of. Hey, Mark is showing us how to look, now look cosy and chic, because let's be honest, as soon as I get home, yeah. I put on my really grungy old, old sweatpants. And that's how, that's how what we all do, and we all get to come home. Obviously now, when we're at home, yes. I think for your own mental 
well-being, yeah. I think you need to get up. I think you need to be showered. Absolutely. You need to, to, to be in a different outfit. I'm not talking about sitting there suited and booted. No, that's silly. a nice formal dress. <laughs> well, that's just me on a Saturday, but anyway. <laughs> but it's a, it is about just just feeling like, you you know, if you're working from home, you're, you, you're there. Okay. You, you know what I mean? When you finish your day, then that's you. I understand, but it's more, it is still comfortable. It's comfortable, because you want to be comfortable. Of course you, you do. But it's not your oldest horrible. You know those things that we've all got. No, no, you know, jogging pants. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's important. I really, I really, I think, I think, I think it really yeah. is. And the shower thing should be more. Well, that's the thing. I think I've already heard about people who've been at. It was three o'clock, and I realised I was three in the afternoon, and I realised I've been working in my pajamas, and that's that's no good. Understandable, but we've got to stop that. You've got to, right. you've got okay. To. So let's take a look first of all. I, I, I think it's just a, a very simple, cheek outfit. Oh, cute. But with a very important message. Everything will be fine. I love this message. I keep saying it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but everything will be fine. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's, uh, and it's, it's just a really easy to wear sweatshirt. It's eight pounds from Primark, um, and uh, and it's it's, it's just it's a huge, it's a lovely sure. slogan. There's so many beautiful slogan pieces out there at the moment. Then we've got the uh, the trousers. So the all important trousers, because that's what you want. Now I call these a formal job. Just taking a minute of peace while the children play football outside with their dad. Um, home educating is really good fun. I'm loving it and I'm loving the fact that I can diversify a bit and do things they want to do. I can see where it goes horribly wrong for people who do it all the time. One, because you need a lot of dedication to do it well and two, I can pick and choose what I do because I know it's not going to be forever but if you're doing it forever they must miss out on so much by choosing what they they want to do and you not having the knowledge to be able to teach things properly so to all those home educators that do it well good on you you must be bloody exhausted because you had to dedicate a lot of your life to it um and to all those that aren't doing it so well school's not a bad thing but anyway i'm enjoying a nice cup of coffee um whilst they play football outside, so cheers. He studies PE lesson hard then. No, it's been a jogging ten minutes. A bit of a theme for lunch today. <laughs> I'm in our history. We will be judged by our capacity for compassion. Our ability to come through this won't just be down to what government or businesses do, but by the individual acts of kindness that we show each other. The small business who does everything they can not to lay off their staff. The student who does a shop for their elderly neighbour. The retired nurse who volunteers to cover some shifts in their local hospital. When this is over, and it will be over, we want to look back on this moment and remember the many small acts of kindness done by us and to us. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this BBC News special. I'm Jane Hill. The government is preparing to announce a new emergency package of measures aimed at protecting millions of jobs during the coronavirus pandemic. In what would be an unprecedented move, the state would step in to help pay the wages of private sector companies. And above all, now we're going to defeat this disease with a huge national effort to slow the spread by reducing unnecessary social contact. And I'm tough, and I know it has been inconvenient, but these actions that we're all taking together are helping to take the strain off our NHS. And bit by bit, day by day, by your actions, your restraint, and your sacrifice, we are putting this country in a better and stronger position. People whose lives can, must, and will be saved. We've all got a salad pot. Oh, so good, this is our delivery from the local pub. There's a family that very rarely gets takeaways and never gets things delivered to their door. This is quite exciting.
Oh. Let me just tuck myself in. Morning. Um, I can't be bothered to watch the telly this morning. I'm all TV'd out. I'm going to have a weekend off. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, just uh, relax a little bit. Um, I'm still feeling a bit agitated after a Facebook rant that I had. It's my, my fault. I shouldn't have ranted on Facebook. I don't know why I did. I should learn my bloody lesson. Um, I should know that all those people that do agree with you won't say anything because they don't want to be in your discussion. So I just had lots of people who obviously didn't agree with me, which is fair enough. You know, their opinions were perfectly valid and I totally get what they were saying. But I th do still think people aren't maybe seeing the big picture. And maybe it's because they don't want to see the big picture or can't see the big picture. But I do totally get what they're saying. Um, but I do feel like everybody's just shouted me down. So I think I'll stay off social media for a while because at the moment I don't want to have high blood pressure. Um, so today our plans are, we thought we might have a, um, a little trip to the shed because... I've heard that's quite nice. Um, and maybe a little trip to the vegetable patch because I've heard that's quite nice this time of year. Um, yeah. I still don't get why there's loads of traffic going past. Not everybody can be going to work on a Saturday morning. It just always sounds normal and I'm waiting for it not. Where's everybody going? To explain my Facebook rant. So basically I was saying about how younger people and business people and everybody are sacrificing so much. Their livelihoods, their incomes, education. Um, and basically um, a lot of the time for, for older vulnerable people yet some of these older vulnerable people are just blatantly then going about their lives like nothing's going on and it's almost I feel like it's a lack of appreciation for the fact that some people are losing well a lot of people are losing work and money and things like that to protect the more vulnerable in society and I know anybody could guess it don't get me wrong I'm you know very aware of that but that's even more so why we should be doing what the government recommends it's almost like i feel like you know people who are blatantly going out still living their lives and going to cafes which they can't now anyway and doing stuff like that it's a basically a like oh fuck off i don't care i don't care that kids don't have to go to school for three months and i don't care that you're losing your money and your jobs it doesn't matter because I'm still going to live my life, despite the fact that all this is happening to protect me. And I know that's a very black and white way of looking at it. And I know lots of people would disagree with me, and possibly I might disagree with me at another time. So, we'll see. <laughs> Bereavement is never easy to bear, so it's having some real personal isolation in my shed today.
It's really annoying me how most of the adverts on the radio at the moment are for things that aren't going to happen, like festivals and come to the Isle of Wight for an Easter break and, and all these things um, that aren't happening. And it's just fueling that belief in people that this is just going to go away and it's not real. Really, they should be taking these adverts off and having a wash your hands, stay inside advert. Just don't understand. Benji just came in and made me a lovely daisy and flower chain caterpillar. He says he'll too be, be too busy to make it tomorrow because he'll be busy being with me. I'm blessed with lovely children, all four of them. Are. Aren't I lucky? So funny. <laughs> <laughs> See, to be honest, I think this is probably better than actually going out. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Right. Um, some sugar chassis I found in there. And? Um, a Turn little around. tin that has a little piece of Lego in that's really annoying and uses as a grenade. Okay. And other little tiny bombs. And also hand gel and a spinning blade. <laughs> so today's rant, my husband puts on his deodorant. Um, it's why are still people going out when they don't need to? Honestly, there's pictures of flower markets in London with hundreds, hundreds of peoples and parks with loads of people. Don't people understand social distancing and why we need to do it? It is selfish, stupid behaviour and it will ultimately lead to more deaths. It will ultimately lead to the NHS not being able to cope and possibly putting us in lockdown because nobody's listening. It's like a bunch of naughty school children who are not doing what they're told because they think it doesn't apply to them. This is really selfish behaviour and it's happening all over the world for all the good things that are happening and people trying to help. There are so many fucking selfish bastards out there who are not thinking about anybody else apart from themselves okay we had a really well i had a really bad day yesterday just i was really depressed and sad um and everything else it was really bad and stressed and it was hard work and the kids didn't want to do google classrooms and it was just horrible and now we're not allowed to go in unless it's a not allowed to go out unless it's essential so today I'm starting the day thinking it doesn't matter what I do or what I wear so I've done some lovely eye makeup and I think if nothing else um, it will surprise the children and hopefully start the day off to a random bizarre start but to be honest it still seems to be quite a lot of traffic and I can't quite work out why when you're only going to be going on essential journeys. Oh, 
after a morning of potting and talking to friends on messenger I come out into the garden Jane, um, is this yours, Mummy? Yeah, that's my littlest one, Honey. That's Honey, and that's Philip. I'm just saying that it's bigger than mine. Like, Daddy's bigger than Mummy. See this then? Oh, there you go. You can see now. Ten. after the government declares a national emergency over coronavirus and brings in drastic rules to keep people at home. These measures are not advice. They are rules and will be enforced, including by the police, with fines starting at £30 up to unlimited fines for non-compliance. OK, and that there are 8,077 confirmed cases in the vocals, as we know. The total is thought to be considerably larger than that because not everybody is being tested. They're going to be sleep be sleeping, what are they going to be doing? Um, I really don't know. Um, we might have to try and head maybe more into the country. Um, but as we head more into the country, it means we're not near to the airports. Um, going to try and look for other flights, but they're really, really expensive. Um, we don't understand the rules. And the problem is, if we understood the rules, we might be able to work with them. But we don't. Mm, Suzanne Campbell, they're speaking with earlier to Jane Hill, well, our diplomatic correspondent. The first principle is stay home, only leave home if you have to. Okay. So going out to exercise once a day, is there a time limit on this, please? Again, it's a good question. The Prime Minister just said once a day, for example, to walk or run or cycle, even to do it with your household, there's not a time limit. But clearly, four hours of exercising in a place where there might be other people increases the risk over 20 minutes of exercise. So it's about people making sensible decisions. Are not requests, they are rules. You should stay at home, except to shop for food. For medical reasons, for exercise, or for work, including caring and volunteering in the coronavirus national effort. We understand how significant these steps are. We ask for your forbearance, but I think that the public knows that this is important, and they know how vital a task it is that we get a grip on the spread of this virus and slow it down. The more we follow the rules, the sooner we will stop the spread. And so everybody has a responsibility to follow those rules and where possible to stay at home. I know how worried people are. And while this is a great time of turbulence, it is a moment too, that the country can come together in that national effort. As the next step in that effort, today we launch NHS volunteers. We're seeking a quarter of a million volunteers, people in good health, to help the NHS for shopping and for delivery of medicines and to support those who are shielded to protect their own health. The NHS volunteer responders is a new scheme set up so that people can come and help and to make sure that the NHS and the local services that are needed get all the support that they can. I could also announce that the call we made at the weekend for people to return to the NHS has been incredibly successful so far. So far, 11,788 people have answered that call. 2,660 doctors, over 2,500 other health professionals and pharmacists, and 6,147 nurses. And I pay tribute to each and every one of those who's returning to the NHS at its hour of need. 
In addition, from next week, 5,500 final year medics and 18,700 final year student nurses will move to the front line to make sure we have the people we need in our NHS to respond to this crisis. In total, that's over 35,000 more staff coming to the NHS when the country needs the NHS most. Finally, I can announce today that we will next week open a new hospital, a temporary hospital, the NHS Nightingale Hospital at the Excel Centre in London. The NHS Nightingale Hospital will comprise two wards, each of 2,000 people. With the help of the military and with NHS clinicians, we will make sure that we have the capacity that we need so that everyone can get the support they need. But no matter how big we grow the NHS, unless we slow the spread of this virus, then as we've seen, those numbers will continue to rise. And that's why it's so important that everybody follows the advice and stays at home. The final point I want to make is one of thanks. As Health Secretary and as a citizen, and on behalf of the whole country, I want to thank the staff of the NHS, those who work in social care, all of you, not just the doctors and nurses who normally get mentioned, but the pharmacists, the paramedics, the managers, and all staff across the board. You are the front line in this war against this virus, and we all pay tribute to you. You're going to give your all over the next few weeks, and I want you to know that we salute you, and I will strain every single to get you everything you need to keep you safe so that you can do your job keeping all of us safe.